I always feel at home wherever I find myself in Africa. The pygmy people are ethnic groups whose average height is usually short. I guess I'm also one of them. Currently, there are 120,000 pygmies in the world. The pygmies are known to have an intimate relationship with the forest because it's their home for centuries. This is Bwindi Bohoma area. And in Bwindi Bohoma, we have two tribes. Those are the Bachiga. Then there are also Batwa people. The Batwa are the people who used to stay in the forest. The pygmies can be found in Rwanda, Burundi, Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Zambia, Gabon, Angola. But never did I know that in Uganda, pygmies also exist. In Uganda, they call them the Batwas. They are believed to have been staying in Green National Park since 1930s. Then in 1990, they were advised to come out of the forest because the government of Uganda wanted to conserve the forest. Then it had to do, let the people come out of the forest. Then the forest had to remain with animals, no people. But it's sad to say that currently they are on the edge of disappearing. They used to stay in the forest, they, would, they used to own the forest. But because the government want to sell gorillas, mountain gorillas and other things, the battle were chased in the forest without any compensation. We are here advocating for the Batwa in order to, to be developed. We develop them through education. We have a charity organization which we use to make a fundraising or to get a fund from outside. From the well wishers, the people who are interested in conservation mm. can do donation, fundraising to help these people to go to school. Because when the generation don't go to school, they will always remain poor. Mm. And they were, remain, they were owning the forest. No, they don't own the forest anymore. They don't own the forest anymore. So what do they do outside? Uh, they stay outside. They have a land that was given them by a non-government organization. Uh, they are regarded to be the poorest in our area. They are the poorest people in our area. They don't own anything. When you go and see where they sleep, they sleep. Some of them sleep in this kind of houses. So when you visit their settlement, you feel, feel, you feel unhappy. Wow, that's sad. But using the tourists who come to see gorillas and the tourism that is taking place, well wishers are always supporting. So, I want to tell you guys something. Where we are right now, where we stand is Uganda. I don't know if you guys can see the hill right in front of me. That's the end of Uganda. Behind it is Congo DRC. And let me tell you one thing. I have been to Goma. And Goma was so green. And I was like, when I was here, I was like, why do I feel like I'm in Goma? It's giving me a Masisi vibes. So when the tour guide said, hey, this is just Uganda. And then this place is Congo. And I was like, I was right. Where am I going right now? I'm actually going to see um, pygmies. According to Dubrinsky, he says they are world shortest people. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know where Dubinsky got that from. Come along with me. Let's go meet the pygmies. But let me tell you one fun fact. The pygmies used to stay in the forest where the gorillas are. When Uganda wanted to conserve the forest, they decided to kick them out. Yeah, let me use that word, kick them out, so that they'll be able to reserve the forest, so that the gorillas can, um, I mean, live forever without going extinct. So basically, the pygmies are now back in town which I know and believe that they are not used to the lifestyle they're living right now. So we are here where the pygmies are. You can see some of them right under the cave. I hope you become nice to us, man. I, I hate to film people when they are sitting down cool, but you know what, I have to do this for you guys, man. Let's go. Uh, since the battle left in the forest 30 years ago, the battle have been intermarried with the local people and the battle have been eating the same food like we eat. The battle are no longer very short. Some are short, others are tall. But still their understanding remains for battle. When you study them and live with them and see how they are living, they are quite different from the Bachiga people. Yeah. 
Oh, the clap of the hand is the welcoming clap. Okay. I'm not in the Chevy Jeffrey Mutua Yazali. It's called Jeffla. It's called Jeffrey, the Mutua who was born in the forest. Wow. Mm. And we call him the battle chief in our cave. He's the head of the cave. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hi. Mm. Uh, mm. You know the Trump, Jackson. Mm. It's called Jackson. Also born in the forest. Yeah. <laughs> who, who gave you the name Jackson? When they left in the forest, yeah. they had to start going in our churches. Mm. In the forest, they had their own church. But when they left in the forest, mm. they had to start go in our churches. So he got it from our, our Anglican church of Uganda. You can argue with him, but forest, he had a different name. What was the forest name? Chomukama. 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 Okay. Mm. So, uh, there is an arrangement of how they would stay in their caves. When you want to sleep in a cave, this would be a bed. These are African giant fan leaves, and this would be a, a bed of a battle chief. And he would be having his fire, would help him for to hit the legs. What? So that's how they would sleep. So this is what we use it to cover cover ourselves with. Ah. Is not scared? Is it warm for them in the forest. For them in the forest, this is warm enough. Wow. Okay, they will be having some skins and the back clothes. Wow. Mm. How about their legs? It's not gonna burn. The legs will always be there to make sure ah. because. They would walk on a bare foot and it would be very, very cold. So he, when he puts it close to the fire, that's what he would do. Would, would do it. I think you need to call me the forest man. Because the whole of today, I've been moving through forest. Tracking gorillas. And now I need to go find where the pygmies live in the forest. Huh. Okay, let's just go. Uh, but they used to live deep in the forest than this one. <sighs> but they are currently a bit closer to um, the community. And we are on our way to go find them. Huh. Most welcome to the Batwa, Batwa Forest. These people used to stay in the forest, and this is their uh, forest cemetery. When one of them die, for them, they used to use these Batwa slots as their coffin. They would bring the dead person, put him here. When the, the head is facing down, the legs are facing up. They would bury like that. They would bury one here, Another, another on the other side, another on the other side. So where you are standing have humans? Huh? Where you are standing has people? Yeah. Buried? Yeah. Okay. And they would do, make fire here to protect the animals against the, the dead person, not to eat the dead person. They would be having fire side of the forest, forest cemetery. We are right now going to walk and meet their traditional dance. Our church. This would be the church where they would play their God, especially when they are going to hunt, their God would bless them to get the animals. And sometimes they would use them as they would use it as their accommodation, the bastard's roots through. So when they play in this church, they would always kill the animals when they are going to hunt. Now it's playing. Who is she praying to? Playing to their God. Who is their God? 
They call him Nyavinji. Nyavinji is their god of the forest, whom they used to play to get the animals to the meat. Especially they would, they would get blessings when they are going to hunt. Mm -hmm. mm. They would get the back clothes from this tree. The back clothes would be got from this tree. So this would so be. So what she's holding has come from the tree. Yeah. Wow. Back clothes. Naturally wow. made. They don't wash it. They don't wash it. They don't wash it. Wow. Okay. Just keep it. Keep putting it in the sun. And okay. to be their clothes. This one and the skin of the animals which they would eat. And they would do. They would, They used to to hunt forest bush pigs, uh, dikers and monkeys. Those are where the common meat they would eat. Soon they no longer live in the forest, they decided to show me their lifestyle when they used to live in the forest. And I believe that was quite interesting. Like this is how they used to comb their hair when they were living they, they, when they live in the forest. But but where do you get this from? From African giant giant tree. Mm. Mm. Oh, this one. Mm. So it's the same like African giant pine tree. This one. Oh, okay. Same thing. The pygmies are hunter gatherers, and one thing about their hunting is that they will first make noise to confuse the animal. Hunt it down, and on their way back, they will sing in celebration of a great hunt. that I think we all need to learn from them is the fact that the food that they hunt are shared among the whole community. These people, they used to stay most of the, their time hunting in the forest. Mm -hmm. And they would come when they are tired mm -hmm. and sexually dormant. They would chew this type of the bark of the, the tree mm -hmm. and they would become sexually active. Really? Are you this one? I take it home. I want to, to get the, for you the fresh one. Huh? Oh, give me, give me some, give me some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I take it home. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so this tree is the, where Viagra comes from. Yeah. Mm. The back of it acts as African Viagra. You can see that they have always destroyed it from top. Wow. This side. They always oh, sell it to the people who are in need of it. They always use it. So wow. it will be the medicine for these people. Wow. That's super crazy, man. Yeah. Never knew. It's like they live in a forest and they've found everything that makes their life easier and better. Give me some, man. I need it. Okay. Thank you. Ah, I save it. Too many. I, I, what do I do? I eat it? I will call it. How? How do I do it? I will call it. That, like this? I will call it. I will call it. I will call it. What did he say? What did he say? You can mix it with tea. And tea? Mm. And then this one? Yeah! yeah. 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 So this would be the Batwa community. These huts would be the, the Batwa community. Uh, they used to have the forest tree house. Mm. The forest tree house would be a hut where they would leave their children when they are going to hunt. An old man like a grandfather or grandmama would keep there with a bow and narrow to protect the old, to protect the young one against the wild animals. It's down on tree? Yeah, it's always up so that the animals cannot easily climb there to, to take the children away when the parents have gone to hunt. We 
where you see the smoke, that means fire is coming. So it would be teamwork, rubbing two sticks together to make fire, yeah, would not be easy. They will come the fire. So they use the they use the fire for smoking. It's going to smoke now. Someone is going to smoke. Also, they would use the fire for harvesting honey. Living out of your own natural habitat is extremely tough. Hence, the tougher life of these pygmies living in this part of Uganda. And it's about time the government compensate and empower them so that they will be able to live happily in their new found home. I hope you all like this video. Share so that others can learn something new from this video. My name is Mr. Ghana Baby. Please help us reach 1.5 million by liking and subscribing to this YouTube channel. I'll see you all in the next one. I am Maya.